On today's video, a civil war breaks in Kingdom 457. It happens more often than you think. Kingdoms get into disagreement and then civil wars begin. This one has a very weird background story, one that some of you will agree with, disagree with, understand, not understand, and all of it along the way. It's happening while Lost Kingdom is going on. Lost Kingdom is part of the Civil War. Everything you need to know, a bunch of rallies, a bunch of reports, tons of action, and all that good stuff in this video. So sit back, go grab some popcorn, drop a like on the video. YouTube, welcome back to Gecko Gaming. A civil war broke in 457 last night. Turns out that it's a dispute over KVK. We'll go over that in a bit. Yellow are right now scrambling, trying to get their territory back to being active as Orange cut them off right there. I'm a sponsored content creator by Rise of Kingdoms. If you enjoy the content, drop a like on the video. 57% of you are not subscribed yet. Welcome to all of you new viewers to my channel. I hope to earn your subscription today with some war action and a little bit of a background story. Let's start off by looking at the map really quickly, see who the players are. By the looks of things, it was yellow, bluish, orange, and pink that kind of together ruled this kingdom. And by the looks of things, this was all about a decision within KVK. Now, these are the kingdoms fighting. Fate changers in orange are gonna go up against uh, the folks in the Creed in pink, uh, pink-ish. Uh, both of them five and a half billion power alliances. And then on top of that, there are two other alliances that are a bit smaller. This blue alliance that are, uh, I believe they're bound by blood for 57 bigger sign thingy, bound through blood. And then there is uh, the folks in yellow who currently are inactive and looking to build an alliance fortress to get their territory back in action. Kings of war. So turns out, that in this Lost Kingdom right here, there were two groups of alliances. 478, 493, who are up on the top there, with 465 and 499, who are at the corner at the bottom, kind of like corners in corners. And on the other side was 503, 460, 457, and 456. Apparently, my understanding of the situation is that 503 were not going to split their forces between the left side zone 6 and the bottom side zone 6 to help out uh, the folks in uh, 457. Something of that sort caused the situation where 457 decided we might want to change sides. And then there was a vote. Now, in most kingdoms that have a lot of alliances running the show, what ends up happening is that there's this king's council while we're at it, double rallies on this poor guy getting wrecked. Uh, it's not fun at all. But when there is a king council, there is like an alliance council worth of people that vote, right? The problem in those kinds of situations is you have to adhere to the vote. And it turns out that in Kingdom 457, the vote was we are going to flip sides. We're not going to go with 503 anymore. We're going to flip sides. Ooh, this guy lost a decent amount of troops. The rally definitely took more deaths than, than the guy did. But anyway, the vote was casted. It ended up being four versus three for changing alliances to go to 478, 493 side of the things while leaving 503, 406, and 456 in the back. Uh, is it good? Is it bad? None of my decisions, but the bottom line is the vote was made and then the Creed decided they're not going to honor the vote. That's my understanding. Now, don't come at me with like saying, oh, this is completely false or it's like, because I hear that I heard the story from both sides. I kind of understood what's going on. I don't understand the internal politics. I don't understand who runs the kingdom. I don't understand what is the KVK situation. All I can tell you is that there was a vote, the vote said X, some folks decided not to follow the vote, and it caused a civil war in the midst of Zone 5 being open in KVK. As all this was going down, you guys got to see a bunch of reports, nobody was safe in here. Folks got zeroed left and right, folks had to shield, cities were hit, 35, 35 million power player is about to lose a lot of troops in this rally. It was just a bloodbath. Now, my personal opinion on this doesn't matter because the way kingdoms are run is unique for each kingdom. However, 
when you have a certain system in play and then you don't follow that system no matter for what reason, it usually causes these kinds of problems. Civil wars are not pretty. People are shielding, people are getting zeroed, flags are burning, and this is in the middle of a KVK where you should be at your most like united time to go up against a different kingdom. So if this actually happened, and for the record, this is Lost Kingdom 61, uh, 503 started burning flags out of uh, the folks who wanted to backstab them essentially and uh, clearing them off this zone five. It's not a full clearance of 457 because the rest of the alliances in 457, the Creed and all of them said, hey, we're gonna stick with you guys at 503. So they only got pretty much these folks burned out for now. I don't really know what's next per se, but all I can tell you is there were rallies on flags all night long. The problem is in these kinds of scenarios that you need a couple of different things for a civil war to really work. First of all, the stronger side needs to be your side. Secondly, you need to have the more experienced warriors and players in your field in order to fill rallies correctly, have the better commanders, have the better attack and so forth and so on. And for 457 X thingy, it seemed that they had the firepower, but very, um, okay, very rarely did it have situations where a rally wasn't filled properly or people were not necessarily paying attention to their deaths or severely wounded or hospitals. And so it really caused some, some issues very early on. And while 457, as you can see right here, um, at uh, how, whatever you want to call it, the, the, the creed got a lot of damage done to them early on and they did lose a few flags along the way while they were fighting and all that good stuff it, it didn't really seem like a clear-cut um, situation for uh, the folks who were trying to combat uh, the, the Creed right baby cow the king ports in right there puts in some troops and then comes his Wuzetian this guy I guess migrated from another lost kingdom. He already had Wuzetian expertise. So she was pretty much everywhere defending everything, which made things so much harder. And it's, it's a point to be made in this video in general, which is folks migrating to younger kingdom with big new, with the bigger commanders. Like this is lost kingdom season two. And there is a Wuzetian already holding a flag before that lost kingdom season two ended. So I don't really know how much I like that. It says that those who get the migrators in quicker get the better bang for their buck and can ultimately dominate a kingdom. You can get to a point where folks can migrate into a kingdom and completely overtake it from newer players because these commanders are available. Now, I understand that more mechanics are being added into the game to block commanders, but here you're seeing a Wuzetian defending a flag while this kingdom is in the midst of the beginning of their season two of KVK. So I don't know how good these mechanics are or whether or not they're in place or not, but they're definitely needed because it caused massive issues. In the same concept, I can say I saw Edward rallies happening where Edward shouldn't be available yet. He was available, I believe, middle way through KVK season two-ish, like towards the end of it something like that, not during zone five of KVK season two, that I remember at least, maybe I'm wrong. But again, Wuzetian is definitely not available and she is holding this flag like crazy. Here is, um, here's my take on all this. Unfortunately, it happens. Unfortunately, when disagreements happen between the two biggest alliances in the game, in the kingdom, it usually ends up in civil war. The problem I see here is that these kinds of things cannot surface during KVK, right? When these things surface during KVK, it means that things were already bad enough before, but we kept pushing through to get to KVK and then in KVK stuff exploded. And it causes a lot of issues because 503, 460 and 5, 456 had 457 as an ally for their KVK efforts. And now they're potentially gonna be down at least one alliance. Folks are already migrating out. Folks are already talking about leaving. And that compromises the KVK for three other kingdoms because of stuff of an internal kingdom. So I understand why this happened. I 
think it's inevitable if you know you make a vote the vote goes one way and then some folks say no we're not going to honor the vote then there is there is no way around this but it's a shame that it happened during this time while we're done with all that rallies all over the place i mean flags were getting burned left and right all night long there were six seven rallies out between cities getting hit flags getting hit it was crazy orange for a little while started gaining momentum for a little while the folks in orange really managed to push up get a few of these pink flags burned get a little bit of extra territory around uh, the lost the, the the temple and it got to the point where yellow were pretty much out of the fight because they don't have active territory anywhere nearby and to build their alliance fortress was going to take a few hours I believe they did have folks who came into the pink alliance into the creed to kind of help out but the bottom line is when you need to get multiple alliances hitting from the same time and one of them is completely disabled it's a huge problem but the creed held the creed held very well and even though the rallies were consistently coming out the trade-offs were not that good for the folks aggressing the creed had Wuzetian, who was really, really, really being a pain in the butt, plus a few other expertise commanders like a Constantine out there that were really strong when it came to garrison, and they punished severely the folks in Orange. Now, the problem for the folks in Orange is that it was a little bit disorganized. They tried definitely to get like a crazy attack out and as you can see they kindly allowed me into their king their alliance they explained to me what happened the other side explained to me what happened they shared with me reports it's not like these guys are in any shape or form bad people or bad warriors or ooh, that was a crazy rally and none of that but it was just when it's a civil war it's all about chaos and at this point whoever's awake early on has the most tier fives and the better commanders will most likely win there's no strategy involved it's just a matter of holding and the creed was just doing a better job holding now granted they also had the lost te the lost temple which means they could give negative buffs negative titles to their opposition as well as look at this constantine holding with a richard i mean phooey yeah it this is actually a, not the best trade-off uh, the Edward Yi Song Ye rally here really did a huge amount of damage. But tit for tat, the Creed was doing well. They mostly took positive trades. Some of these that you're seeing are the negative ones, but there's also a few positive ones you'll see in a bit. And it just caused a complete chaos. Look at this trade right here with a Charles Martel and a Yi Song Ye holding a building and 278 compared to the 181,000 deads is not bad at all. The severely wounded are a problem, but heal, 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 and you're back in action. A lot of tier four action, a lot of this happened, and it just kept going for a while. Orange gained some ground. It seemed like they were potentially getting to a point where they might be able to get where they wanna get to. And then uh, as this, these rallies were continuing, a ceasefire was uh, reached. A ceasefire was reached at some point. Uh, there were markers talking about taking Lost Temple, which is opening later today. We're gonna keep an eye on that. And if it actually becomes a war there, then we'll go record that and show it for you guys in, in this channel as well. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and of course, smash a like on this video. But a ceasefire was reached. And then it seemed that things were going to be okay. But for now, Let's focus back a little bit on the action and then go into the story towards the end of this video because there's a final piece of this story that is very important for you to know about the future of 457. The war was raging and I joined the folks in uh, 457 thingy, I don't know how you call it, uh, to, to make it so that they are in blue on your screen. Then you have the other side in red and that way it's a little bit easier for you guys to watch. I'm very thankful, by the way, to them for letting me into their alliance and sharing with me their reports, their stories, their information, explaining to me a few things along the way. They were very cool peeps, and I really hope that they find a way to either grow back into 457 the way it was before, or even if they migrate out to find a new home, a new place to enjoy the game. At the end of the day, we're all here to have some fun, and if drama and craziness is going on, it's probably better off to find a place where you can you know, have more fun. 
rallies were going left and right. I mean, at this point, it was just flag after flag after flag, but pink were really good at defending them. You saw from the beginning that there was one flag above the temple that was, or, or one flag, orange flag up there, and it was surrounded by pinks. And those flags that surrounded orange stayed alive to this day. Orange were not able to take out the flags that were right up there. They were able to take out flags that were at the bottom area, which then they tried to come around through to this area. But I guess the ceasefire was uh, achieved before they made it there. There was a lot of flag burning, but the essential flags, the ones touching the Lost Temple, the ones that connected the Lost Temple to the Alliance Fortress of, of the folks in the Creed, were were holding and were holding very very well early on less favorable trades as time went by much more favorable trades for them and it's both because the creed were really <laughs> there's a smiley right there the creed were really good at reinforcing refilling and putting in the correct troops and being active in the situation but it also was in part because the folks who were aggressing had a little bit of of um snafus when it came to their rallies uh, i saw for example at some point an edward rally with infantry in it which means the third skill of edward which requires only archers to be active for extra skill bonus went out the window and so there were a little bit of these situations happening of miscoordination that that really caused this problem and i don't think it's miscoordination because people are noobs or don't know what they're doing i think that it was because everything happened so quickly that the folks that were online and were there were trying to help in whichever way they could. And when you're like running all over the place, joining this rally, joining that rally, fighting in the open field, doing this, doing that, all these things at the same time, mistakes happen. And one lapse of judgment where you sent infantry to the, to the archer rally and nobody notices. And all of a sudden that Edward rally, which should have 25% extra skill damage, out the window it goes and so it became a very very tough situation which as i mentioned landed at uh by the way on top of all that we're talking not only skill damage bonus 25 percent but also damage to infantry increased by five percent if that edward is expertise which it was so a little bit of a shame and as you can see materi right there getting the traitor because he was leading a rally it was all over the place and so we reach the conclusion of this story. A ceasefire was achieved. And the problem here was this. There was no way to walk back what happened. There is no point in destroying 457. If you were going to be vindictive and uh, a little petty about what happened, you could just destroy the kingdom and that's that. As you can see, that's the orange flag I was talking about. It was the bottom area orange that you saw is the one that managed to keep pushing up on the left side, but this right side was just rallying everything and anything humanly possible, and it just wasn't working. Wuzetian had a lot to do with it too. Materi, I guess that's how you say his name, I apologize if I said your name wrong, it, who came into 457 to be a king, to be one of the leaders in here, sent a mail out saying, guys, it's, it's done. Uh, there's no point in burning up 457. We can keep pushing forever, but all that'll happen is we're gonna zero ourselves. We're gonna zero our friends. We're gonna, we're just gonna annihilate each other. It's mutually assured destruction. And he was not about that life. That's a decision that's really tough to make and a really hard pill to swallow because most people don't wanna back down. Most people are like, we, we were the best, we're the strongest. But to make a decision that guys, we're fighting for something that's insignificant. All due respect, and I'm saying this as someone who solely believes this, a kingdom's number means very little. If you're in 457, 557, 93, uh, 493, uh, 478, uh, even, even 59 as far as I'm concerned, the kingdom itself as a number means very little. What means something is the people in it and the, the energy, the vibes, the the way the kingdom is run the kingdom as a kingdom is is a is a vessel to what is important in the game which are the people the alliances in the in the game 
And so the call was, guys, I'm migrating out. A bunch of us are migrating out. Let's go find a new home. Let's go find a better place for us to have some fun. And I really think that's a really responsible response. It's a really responsible response. There's no point in civil warring. There's no, no added value to anyone zeroing each other out. No point in doing that. And so the ceasefire was achieved. And yeah, by the looks of it, the folks in the creed are going to keep their kingdom and uh, half of the strength of that kingdom is going to find itself coming out of here. Uh, are the creed going to lose members too? Maybe. I'm not sure. They could. But the bottom line is this just destroyed 457. It's going to be a kingdom that's going to need to be rebuilt a little bit. And that's before their zone sixes and KVK opened up. So what do they do now? They've spent a lot of their resources, speed ups, troops, deaths and whatnot fighting each other and not other kingdoms. So I hope for the kingdom of 457 that they managed to still somehow contribute and enjoy their KVK, their alliance with uh, 503, 460 and 456. I hope it holds for them. Uh, if the side that wanted to stick with them is the one that stays in control of the kingdom, I'm assuming there shouldn't be a problem. But then again, there could be, I don't know. I really don't. It's just a bad situation overall. And I figured you guys might wanna know about it and enjoy a little bit of the war while we're at it. We are hoping to have some Altar of Darkness action coming up in a couple days. We'll be live streaming that hopefully. By then, yeah, I'm Gecko. I'm out of here. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I appreciate every one of you. Drop a like on the streams on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Join my Discord, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys sooner rather than later. We have a little bit of an extra footage going on here as the madness still ensues. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys sooner rather than later. Enjoy your weekend and take care. See you tomorrow, 4 p.m. UTC for a stream. We'll talk about a Cyrus League Finals predictions, discussion and all that good stuff. So you don't want to miss that one out. Take care. Peace.